Why is this sounding so horribly familiar? We haven't even caught bin Laden yet in the aftermath of what happened the last time these guys had safe haven in that part of the world. Joining us now is a man who has something to say about the bin Laden issue, a man who is much better with maps than I am, a man who is trained in using geographic analysis to find hard to find stuff like, say, endangered bird species, and maybe now the head of Al Qaeda. Thomas Gillespie is a professor in the Department of Geography at UCLA. Professor Gillespie, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, you have used geographic analysis to predict that Osama bin Laden might be in one of three specific compounds in one specific city in one specific country. In order to tell us how you got to that finding, can you explain how your modeling works? Uh, yes, certainly. Well, to start off, if you're looking for anything, being an endangered species or a person, you, you really have to approach the question at different spatial scales, at a global scale, a regional scale, and a local scale. Um, and here we have a nice image of a global spatial scale. So what we did was basically we had to find information on his last lo known location, which all we have is Tor Bor in 2001. So that's how we begin the process. And then we add some theory based on biogeography or the distribution of life, uh, which is called distance decay theory, which means the further you go away from that one point, uh, the more likely it is you won't find the similar species composition or in the case with humans, people that have the same beliefs or language and so forth. So your last data point is 2001 in Tora Bora. I'm assuming that means that if you had any further data after Tora Bora, your model would be that much more precise. Yeah, in, in general, like we, we do have a, a model that can be updated. Um, it's standard and repeatable like any other in science. So any the more up-to-date the information, the more accurate the model will be. What are the assumptions that you made here about bin Laden? You had the data point in Tora Bora in 2001. What mm -hmm. were the other things that helped you uh, narrow it down about his needs, about the, the lim limiting places that he might not be? Well, yeah, well, at a global spatial scale, I mean, you can ask the question, did he turn around and go back into Afghanistan, which seems kind of unlikely. Um, but actually, as you go into a regional scale, that's where you really kind of tease out the question of where he hypothetically might be. And uh, here we have an image, this is a night light image that's taken at night in 2007. And you can see the small city of Kabul on the left hand side and then Peshawar in Pakistan on the, the right there. And then if you look in the federal tribal areas which are outlined there, you can see some small cities. But our theory is basically based on this, that extinction is lower in large towns. So if he actually lived in a small town that can be easily monitored, uh, searched, or where people can spread information on him, uh, it's just not very likely that he'd be in a small town, and that's one of our major assumptions. So you essentially assume that he would have to be in a large enough city that he could preserve some sort of element of not being seen. Yeah, and then if you, you think about, yeah, and the theory we used is called island biogeography, which looks at rates of extinction and the size of a habitat, which is like a city island. How else do you narrow down once you figure out the, what size city he might be in what region? How do you get more specific than that? Well, in this image here, what you have is his last known location, which you can see is not very far from a city right over the border in uh, Pakistan, and the city's called Parachinar. Uh, it's the large red dot there, and what you can see is clearly the largest city in the region, and if we, you know, we pulled back from that last image, the only other large cities were uh, Kabul and Peshawar, so this is kind of suggesting that closest to his last known location, this city would have a high probability of housing him, under the theory that, of course, extinction would be higher in a very small area. Now what else um, about that city is useful in terms of finding where he might be? What else do you need to know about what kind of place he could be hiding in? Well that's a great question. Once you get to this point where we have a city picked out, the next thing is we use life history characteristics of Osama bin Laden to figure out a structure that matches his life history characteristic. So for instance, the man is six foot four. Um, obviously we have to look for buildings over six foot four. Uh, he needs electricity for a dialysis machine. We selected buildings within Parachinar that had electricity. We looked at things like protected structures. So you can see on this one there's a wall around it. Um, you can actually see turrets on this one. Uh, and then we looked at other things like privacy and in general finally we looked for, you know, there has to be a tree because if he goes outside I'm sure he's positive that people can look down on him. So when you apply these life history characteristics for every building in the city of Parchinar, three popped out as being you know, places where hypothetically he could be, and this proposes a hypothesis that can be tested and rejected. 
Uh, in terms of testing that hypothesis, anybody in Pakistan reading your study and knocking on the door of any of these buildings since um, this came out? Well, that's a good question. I guess they have a chance to win $25 million if they do go in there and take a look. <laughs> good point. Um, I don't know what the per capita income is there, but you know, it is in the federal tribal areas, and obviously, if you look at any Let's Go guide or travel, it's very difficult for uh, most people to go travel there. Any response from the CIA or any other U.S. government agency? Um, well, you know what, I, I'm a geographer, so what we do is, you know, we kind of feed the CIA students that come through our school. Um, but no, you know, most of my work is really academic, and uh, before we submitted this to a journal, we did, you know, we went to the website and submitted it to the FBI as instructed by the website, but that's about the extent of it. One last question for you. I know you did a study of the lights in the night sky leading up to the surge in Iraq. Can I just ask you really quickly what the purpose of that was and what you found? Yeah, well, that one's, that one is very easy. Uh, basically, we just looked at night light imagery uh, before the surge and after the surge under the hypothesis that if the surge had worked, the night lights should increase as the quality of life increases. Um, but what we found out basically was the lights actually went down after the surge and even before it started, uh, there had already been ethnic cleansing in a lot of the neighborhoods in the south and in the north. Professor Thomas Gillespie of UCLA single-handedly making geography cocktail party conversation across the country right now. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for your time. The study about Osama bin Laden was published online today by the MIT International Review.